Hey, how you doing today? I haven't done this for a while, and my sponsee, Andrew, um, has asked me to start doing these again. So, my brother, Andrew, my confidant, my pal, my best friend, my... Buddy pal, this is for you. Sixteenth. March. Mmm. 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 What do we got today? Oh, intervention. Well, I will tell you what a true intervention is when I'm done. The purpose of searching and fearless moral inventory is to search through the confidence and the concentration of our lives so that we can find out who we are really are. Basic text, page 27. I suggest that with this, you probably read uh, step 4 and 5. It will give you an idea of what you have to do. Using addicts to confess and console a bunch of people. Is it hard to tell from the moment the next we're going to do who they going to be unless an addict is just surprised as anyone else? When we use the behavior deactivator by deactivate by needs of addiction many of us see identified the sorry lost myself for a while our personalities close with the behavior we are practicing while using, leading us to find shame and despair. Today, we don't want to have the people we once were, shaped by the addiction. Recovery has allowed us to change. We can use the fourth step inventory to see past the needs of our old using life and find out who we want to be today. Writing about our behavior and noticing how we feel about the behavior helps us understand who we are and what we did to want it to be. Our inventory helps us to be loved and accepted. We find out who we are. At the root, we begin to understand what's appropriate for us and what we want in our lives to be like. This is the beginning of the coming of the real we really are. Just for today, if I want to find out who I am, I will look at who I've been and who I want to be. You know, Dr. Phil has a saying that fits this very well. The example of future behavior is looking at past behavior. Now, as addicts, when we wanted to use, 
stuff our feelings, not deal with the bill, or not deal with an emotion, we use drugs. So when we first come off drugs, we go through grief and remorse because we lose our best friend. I, I get that. But you can't do it alone, okay? It doesn't matter what city you're in. There's usually a meeting for Narcotics Anonymous. There's usually a meeting for Alcoholics Anonymous, you know, and you can do that and go to those meetings and you don't have to say a word, but, you know, you have to eventually talk. Get numbers, you know. First time you reach out, that phone weighs a thousand pounds, man. That thing is like a weight around my neck, and I could never do that. But once I started doing that, I can't stop doing it. I have two decades underneath my belt by God's grace. And I still call my sponsor once a week. More if needed, depending on the situation that I'm in. So, talks about interventions and inventory. Oh, inventory is a well-rounded example of how we dealt with our feelings, our emotions, our pain, our agony, our suffering, and why we used what we did to stuff what we did. That's an inventory. Searching and fearless moral inventory means that yucky feeling, awful, yucky stuff we don't want to deal with that we put in the closet for so many years. You need to let that out. You need to put that out. If you put garbage in, garbage is going to come out. If you put good stuff in, you are going to understand that good stuff is going to come out. Sitting in a meeting is a very good way to learn how to do the right stuff. Do I still get upset? Yes. Do I still have a temper? Yes. Do I still have character defects? Not so many. You know, I can still be an ass. You know, I can still be a, a jerk. You know, but every once in a while, you have to use tough love to tell these people you're messing up. You see, when somebody comes to Kent, as an addict, I look at them and I say, my first question to them is, do you want an honest answer or do you want to hear what you want to hear? I don't say it in that way. This is the way I meant it. I look at them in saying, do you want an honest answer or do you want me to tell you what you want to hear? You know, it's very simple. And most people will say they want an honest answer and you give them an honest answer and they get mad at you. Well, the reason they're mad at you is because they're sitting and wallowing in their self-pity and in their muck and mire and having fun playing in the muck and using as an excuse for being stuck. If you're stuck in quicksand, you know, and you keep moving, you keep going down, right? If you stop moving and you start letting people help you, you know, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, feel so bad, does it? And for those of us that are car buffs, you can't take a carburetor apart with recalibrate without recalibrating uh, the timing, right? Exactly. So how can you fix a person yourself without doing all the steps? So if you look at it from a point of view, um, you know, uh, us, us car puffs, okay, first you have to take the uh, headers out, or, or the, not the headers, the uh, 
breather off. Then you have to take the carburetor off. Then you have to take the solenoid off. Then you have to take the um, timing belt off. Well, if you don't do that in order, what happens? You get into a great big kerfuffle, right? Well, that's why the steps are written 1 to 12. You know, you can't do 1 to one and four and then five and then eight and nine and expect you to live a proper program you know um, in the 22 years that I have in Narcotics Anonymous you know I've done my steps every day every day I do a 10 11 and 12 you know and uh, I have to do that, you know, and sometimes if there's something that I forget, I have to go and do a step one, two, and three on it, and then a four and a five, and a six, and a seven, sometimes an eight or a nine, depending on the situation. You know, if you want to talk about steps, you know, I, I know them. Okay, I've read the books over and over. You know, I almost have them memorized. You know, I can tell you page for page and, you know, quote for quote what's in those books. You know, but I can quote all the books I want. I, a pastor, I can quote the scriptures as much as I want. I can quote N.A. jargon as much as I want. But if I'm not walking what I'm talking, then what right do I have to be doing what I'm doing? You know, I only tell you what I do myself. And that's what we're supposed to do as addicts. It's one addict helping another. You know? One's not right and one's not wrong. and It doesn't work that way. You know, we all have opinions. You walk into a room with 25 people, you've got 25 different views on the fourth step, right? Probably. Well, okay. Maybe you have 10 because some of them will agree, right? But, uh, you have to go where you're comfortable, you know. And uh, if you need treatment, I do online treatment. I'm an addiction counselor, um, and I can help you uh, spiritually, emotionally, and psychologically because I've been there. It's what I do. It's what I'm called to do. May God bless and keep you until... We meet again.